Hi there, how's it going? My name is Trolls and welcome to ADO. I realize it's been a while ago since we last talked and um, there's a couple of reasons for that. The first one is to what's the right of me, which is SoundPaint. SoundPaint is our own proprietary instruments technology that allows you to play any instrument on your keyboard with 127 velocity layers or real-time generated velocity layers. That means that when you play an instrument it really reacts and behaves like an acoustic instrument. Every time you hit a note on a real instrument, it always does something new. And that's essentially what goes on in sound paint as well. But the other reason for this sort of extended silence is the fact that we've also been looking at contact and trying to figure out how can we push this beautiful over two decade old technology forward as well. And contact is beautiful because there's so many things you could do inside of it. One of them being legato as well. And legato can be many things, but the best example is just to imagine a violin, which is fretless. So when you play between different notes, you always get natural variations and you can glide over them as well. And the way it works in contact is that when you play with overlapping keys, you trigger legato intervals, so you get those natural transitions. But the challenge with legato is that it's beautiful and it works. And so many developers have done so much beautiful work with it, but there's one thing we can't do. And that, from my opinion, is the most common motion in music or at least in melodic writing, it's essentially just playing back and forth between two notes. So it would go like da 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 da. But when I say that right now, da 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 da, every time I go back and forth, there's a natural variation. The best way to demonstrate that is actually just to, for me to repeat this phrase here, so you can hear what static legato sounds like. Da 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 da. That's sort of static, right? You can sort of see the imprint of a machine playing the same thing over and over. We call that the machine gun effect versus just going da 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 da. You know, you get that natural variation in it. So we've done that in contact now. We have the world's first nine way legato based round robin for strings. In this case, it's a quintet, which contains of three different instruments. We have two violins, we have one viola, and we have two cellos. And if you look here at the UI, you'll notice that you have these sort of microphone positions here that allows you to go back and forth in the room and also closer to the two different players for the two violins and the two cellos. So just by turning this one knob, you can generate multiple different microphone positions and sort of dial in the sound that you want. It's beautiful that way. Quintet was also recorded in the same room and with the same players that we used for our deep solo strings and our intimate studio strings. I just want to mention that because these three libraries are particularly designed to just be used together. The sound always glues together. You just know you're in the same room. But as I'm about to show you, it can also work beautiful with our century strings or anthology strings as well. You can actually merge these libraries together and they're perfect because with the studio strings, you get that very near field intimate quality, great for melodic writing, anything that really needs to grab attention in the forefield of music. And then you can use the large orchestral symphonic libraries more in the background to build that sort of symphonic vibe around the solo strings. They're beautiful that way. And the quintet it's virtually a solo instrument. Sometimes you can hear a little bit of the two instruments play together. But for me, when I turn this knob here, I can really sort of dial in the perspective I want. And there's so many different colors in this library as well. Or should I say orchestral colors. But enough of the talk. Let me take you through every single arc. Let me take you through every single legato and really show you the soul of this library here and let the instruments do the rest of the talking. Isn't that beautiful? 
This is our glands, poco vibrato, which really has that sort of almost nervous tension in the note. It's just a glance of the string. And if you really notice, particularly here, you hear the difference? Not the same note. So when I play the same note multiple times, there's natural variation in the arc as well. It feels so natural and it plays so naturally as well. That's why you can go like, Let me try to play the same arc again, but this time with all three instrument sections from the quintet. So the two violins, the viola and the two cellos. Just so sweet and gentle. Let me show you the next one here. It has a little more dramatic vibrato in it. Here's another beautiful arc. It's not as dramatic on the vibrato, but there's still tension on the string. And let me just turn the reverb off and show you the same thing here. They're beautiful, but they are dry. That's what happens in the studio. I personally prefer them with a little bit of reverb on. I think they become a little more sort of silky. So without. And with reverb. And let me just isolate the violins and then play the same thing with the viola. I mean, they're just so beautiful and easy to play. And you can really sort of feel it on the keys, like very gentle. And then just start playing harder. And we often like to do our arcs in multiple sets. So if you look here in the top, for example, the first ones we went through, it was glance with poco vibrato, and then it was glance with molto vibrato as well. And the same structure here for the shorts. So this is the sort of more dramatic version of what we just heard. And the same thing, just very expressive. But we also have longer arcs that are very dramatic and sensitive and sad in their core nature.
let me show you here on the twin violence as well. And I'm also gonna show you a little more about this tab here, which is where you can control the microphone distance between the instruments. It's really an interesting knob to turn around and find the specific color that you want. There's a lot of options in here. And anytime you wanna access the three different instruments in the quintet, you just click up here on the instrument tab. You got the dual violins here, you got the single viola in here, and you got the two twin cellos over here as well. Now they're all loaded, but I'm just gonna unload these guys and focus on the twin violins. So beautiful. Let me um, turn the reverb off here again and then play the same thing a couple of times but with the microphone distance here at different positions so going from close to further away and playing around with the field between the two instruments. And if I just hold down one note here and slowly dial this knob back and forth, you can really get a feeling for all the different colors. You can hear it gets a little more distant when we venture to the right side over here, further away, and then it sort of gets close over here. I'm just gonna turn the reverb back on here and play you the long, very dramatic version of the same arc here. So we were just listening to the poco and now we're gonna to go to the molto vibrato. God, isn't that just so sweet? And the velocities are right there. I have too much to show. <laughs> oh my God, I'm getting lost in the arcs. Uh, let me check out the next one here. In this case, playing with the violas. And this sort of trailing vibrato is beautiful for the twin cellos as well. And let me just try an experiment. Uh, let me play the same piece again here and then just try to solo jam um, the twin violins on top, but using legato so you're gonna see me play back and forth between the same notes here. And just that beautiful marriage between arcs and legato, which is really what this library is focused on.
Uh, <laughs> That was pure accident. It actually went into the next demo, but whatever. Um, as you can see, these strings are somewhat nimble and easy to play. Just always remember to play with overlapping keys so you trigger the interval. And I guess that was a natural segue of improvisation into the nine-way Round robin based legato. I have a variety of small things uh, prepared here in the sequencer. Um, I'm also going to jam a little bit on the keyboard, but I really just want to show you all the different sides to this library, combining different colors, playing with the whole quintet, isolating different legatos, so you really have a full, comprehensive understanding of how extensive it is and how beautiful it is to be able to do these back and forth kind of motions and using the mod wheel as your sort of left hand conductor of expression. In this next little mini demo, it's sort of a Bernard Herrmann kind of style, very Hitchcock-y. Um, you're gonna see a lot of repetitive notes. If you look here, um, this is very, very difficult to do with current generation of libraries because you'll get that machine gun effect every time you do any of these repetitions. So this is really difficult to do, if not impossible, with conventional sampling. But see what happens now when we're playing the twin violins, the solo viola, and the twin cellos together, all playing nine-way round robin, legato. And let me try to isolate them starting with the violence. And the violas. And the twin cellos. One thing I love in this library are the twin violins. Um, they're so delicate. Let me try to play you something here, and you'll notice here that there's an enormous amount of note repetitions on the grid here, just to give you an idea about how flexible it is going across octaves and for any melodic line, and I'll play with it live too. And you can really hear, try to just check the resonance on the bow. You can hear the bow. and the viola.
could almost play it like a fiddle. It's so sweet that way. It is a classical instrument, but depending on your playing style, or sort of just very emotional. And I mean, it's so nimble. You can just play arpeggiations, you can play slow, jazzy, classical, it's just all in the keys and with such a human emotion. And that is the hardest thing of all to do when it comes to same libraries. It's so difficult to get that emotion out. We see it when people play music because it's inherently in the performance, but when you do samples, they have to be recorded in a more mathematical fashion. And that tends to make the samples not breathe and lift so much. So when you find yourself sometimes playing libraries, it's because there was never emotion in the first place. But in quintet strings and something we learned over the years is a variety of unique production techniques to grab that emotion in the sessions so you can feel it on the keys. Just nice that way. And last but not least, our twin cellos. <laughs> And you can hear on that one, I missed a couple of legato notes. So it's very important to play with those overlaps. Let me try one more time here. Let me show you another example here where I'm playing with twin violins and the solo viola. And I'll play some music first just with them, and you can see some very repeated patterns here again, just going back and forth between the same notes. But then I'm also gonna bring in our anthology strings underneath playing arcs, just to see what happens when you take these solo libraries that are recorded in studios, or in this case a quintet, and mix them together with larger symphonic libraries. But let me just trigger here the sequence just playing with the twin violins and the solo viola. Isn't that sweet? Let me add anthology strings to it here. Let me just show what it looks like. In this case here, I'm using the long arc. So Dino's from anthology is just a beautiful set of very, very expressive arcs. Um, I'll highlight them down here in the sequencer. I mean, I think it's so beautiful that we are in a day and age with technology where we have the capacity to go in and record like legato based studio strings and mix them together with these emotional strings that Colin and I recorded over a decade ago in a very, very unique recording environment. And I want to say sometimes I think we get infatuated with celebrity dumb and it has to be this right name drop hall, whatever, but I don't think that's really the case. When I go back and I look at our anthology strings, which I love so much, we really hit something unique because we recorded in a wooden church that no one has really used for like high-end recordings before, 
but it's an awesome environment and in many ways better than a lot of the sort of name brand locations. It's not always the name that makes the difference. It's the actual quality of a room, of the players, of the microphones and everything else going on. And I think it's just important distinction to make because in this day and age, I think we all fall a little bit sort of in the celebrity, them, oh, it has to be this way, this brand, whatever. That's not what it's about. Music is about expression. And there are many, many beautiful rooms and halls and churches and cathedrals that have never been explored before that are just waiting out there as hidden gems. So let me show a little more here in terms of what you can also do with the legatos. For example, here with the twin violins. And it's almost to the degree that you can do trills. I don't even know if you can play that on a, a regular instrument. Um, and that's sometimes important as well. Uh, when we work with orchestral instruments, we have to educate ourselves a little bit and like, what can you do? Like there are certain things here that might be too wild. But it sounds awesome and, and you know, you can synthesize it as well. It doesn't always have to be real, but it's so cool to have the natural variation going back and forth and even playing things that are somewhat abstract. Like, I have no idea what I'm doing here. You know, I don't know. And let me just play the same thing again here, but without reverb. We often get that request. People just want to hear the dry version of it too. For me, it's interesting, like, because you can really hear the imperfections. There's a little bit of grit sometimes. There's stuff that happens when you play it back and forth. That's exactly what we want. We don't want it clinically noise reduced, like, you know, prefab, all cooked down to the perfect boring dish um, that anyone else can have. We need something with variation in it. The same thing again, if I repeat this very sentence, if I repeat this very sentence, if I repeat this very sentence, your brain immediately catches up on this sort of machine gun effect. But if I repeat this very sentence, if I repeat this very sentence, if I repeat this very sentence, it's not the same. And that's quintet strings in his essence. It's full of beautiful emotional arcs. He has advanced legato that allows you to do the most common motion in music. And I honestly don't understand why this has not been done before. For me at least, this is the way I write melodies. This is the way I like to do things. Sometimes I'll go back and forth. Sometimes I'll do changes as well but at least I can do both. 